This is a picture from space showing 89 ships waiting to pass through the Panama Canal. As of August 2023, the number was 154. It has gotten so bad that some of them are paying up to $4 million to get ahead in line. So what in the world is happening here? Why are these ships piling up and why are they paying millions to get ahead in line? This isn't merely a case of too many ships trying to squeeze through. It's a domino effect triggered by multiple factors that have brought the world's busiest waterways to a grinding halt. Now, to understand the importance of the Panama Canal, you need to know its origin and how it came to be. Back in the 1500s, the idea of slicing through the Panama Isthmus to link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans sparked curiosity after explorer Vasco Nunez de Balboa's discovery. King Charles I of Spain pondered the notion, but the terrain's ruggedness seemed like a problem. It wasn't until France, led by Count Ferdinand de Lesseps of the Suez Canal fame, dared to take on the challenge in 1880. Their attempt at a sea-level canal faced relentless rains, landslides, and the devastating onslaught of diseases like yellow fever and malaria. The dream of a sea-level canal crumbled under the weight of nature's fury. Then came the United States, spurred by President Theodore Roosevelt's determination. After acquiring the French assets in the canal zone, the U.S. navigated diplomatic waters to secure rights and eventually orchestrated the birth of the Republic of Panama, sealing a deal for the exclusive control of the canal zone. But constructing this marvel came at a tremendous cost both in terms of human lives and financial resources. The Panamanian Isthmus, a hostile blend of snake-infested jungles and treacherous weather, claimed over 25,000 lives during construction. It took more than three decades and a staggering 375 million, equivalent to 7.3 billion today, to realize this engineering marvel. However, the Panama Canal wasn't merely about connecting waterways. It was about redefining the world's trade dynamics. It solved the age-old problem of ships navigating the hazardous tip of South America, providing a shorter and safer route that reinvigorated global trade. Moreover, streamlining maritime transportation contributed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, an unintended environmental boon. The canal didn't just open doors. It paved new avenues for economic development, creating jobs, fostering environmental conservation efforts, and ultimately allowing Panama to reclaim sovereignty over this vital waterway in the 1970s. In essence, the Panama Canal isn't just a passage. It's a testament to human ingenuity and resilience, a conduit that reshaped economies, societies, and the very landscape of global trade. Yet, despite its triumphant history, the canal faces a new threat, one that tugs at the very essence of its existence, a dire shortage of water. And to know how much of a problem this is, you need to understand how the canal works. The Panama Canal is a complex system of locks, lakes, and carefully orchestrated maneuvers that allow ships to navigate the continental divide. When a ship approaches the canal, it gets tugged gently into alignment by tugboats, the journey through the canal starts with a series of steps, quite literally. The ship enters the Gatton Locks, a three-step process that elevates it about 87 feet above sea level. The process starts with the initial entry where ships find themselves guided into the sea level lock chamber of the Gatton Locks. Once securely positioned within the chamber, the lock doors are firmly sealed shut under the supervision of a lockmaster, ensuring the vessel's containment within the confines of the chamber walls. The elevation phase then follows once the ship is safely located within the chamber. At this point, a crucial valve is activated, enabling a controlled influx of water. This water source originates either from the adjacent higher lock chamber or directly from Gatton Lake itself. The deliberate inflow of water brings about a consequential rise in the ship's position, effectively lifting it within the lock chamber. This incremental process unfolds across each of the three successive lock chambers at the Gatton Locks, incrementally and steadily lifting the vessel to align with the elevation of Gatton Lake. Upon completion of this elevation process, the ship reaches the highest point of the Gatton Locks, aligned with the level of Gatton Lake. At this stage, the vessel gracefully exits the Gatton Locks, and from there, it glides across Gatton Lake, 15-mile stretch made possible by the creation of Gatton Dam. The ship then sails through Calibra Cut, a 7.8-mile artificial valley carved through the Continental Divide. Next stop, the Pedro Miguel Lock, 
where it descends about 31 feet. Miraflores Lake follows, leading to the final descent through the Miraflores Locks, lowering the ship another 54 feet. This intricate dance of water levels and locks is a meticulously calibrated journey guided by gravity's simple yet powerful principle. And then the grand exit. A passage through Balboa Harbor, a graceful glide beneath the Bridge of the Americas, marking the transition from the canal into the vastness of the Pacific Ocean. Now, what about the cost of this movement? It's not a fixed price tag, but depends on various factors like ship size and fuel prices. For instance, cruise ships typically shell out anywhere between $50,000 to $250,000 for the privilege of transiting the Panama Canal. The specifics might vary, though, as the toll structures get updated. Still on the topic of how the canal works, what role does water play in the whole process? And more importantly, how is it possible that the canal has water shortages when it's sitting between two oceans? A single ship navigating through the canal uses a staggering 53 million gallons of fresh water. This fresh water comes from two artificial lakes, Aliula and Gatton, which are fed by rainfall. This massive volume serves as the lifeblood for the canal's lock system, essentially functioning as water elevators that glide ships through their journey. But here's where the plot thickens. A severe drought has descended upon the region, disrupting the canal's usual rhythm. The spring and summer of 2023 witnessed historically low rainfall levels in Panama, dealing a severe blow to the canal's water sources. Gatton Lake, an essential part of supplying fresh water to the canal, has seen its levels reduced seriously, raising alarm bells across the Panama Canal Authority. The consequences are dire. With water levels hitting rock bottom, the ACP has forced to take drastic measures. The number of vessels passing through the canal has been reduced, and strict restrictions have been slapped on ships' depth while transiting. This translates to reduced cargo capacities, limiting the goods these vessels can carry. The Panama Canal Authority, or ACP, has rolled out a series of innovative measures to combat the water shortage gripping the canal. Among these strategies is the implementation of cross-filling lockages at the Panamax locks. This technique optimizes water transfer between chambers during transits, reducing unnecessary discharge into the sea. Additionally, suspending power generation at the Gatton Hydroelectric Plant and hydraulic assistance at the Panamax locks form a part of their conservation efforts. Tandem lockages, transiting two ships simultaneously, and water-saving basins at the Neo Panamax locks also aid in reducing water usage. However, despite these initiatives, the impact of the drought persists. Vessel transits have been reduced, leading to extensive wait times for ships. What used to take hours now spans weeks. This disruption has shed light on how the climate crisis directly impacts global trade. Due to the failure of these approaches, the ACP has employed draft management and lock optimization strategies. Draft management involves adjusting the maximum authorized draft for vessels transiting the locks based on Gatton Lake levels. The draft of a ship is the vertical distance between the waterline and the bottom of the hull, or keel, and it determines the minimum depth of water a ship can safely navigate. The ACP adjusts the maximum authorized draft allowed for vessels transiting the Neo Panamax locks based on the present and projected level of Gatton Lake. For instance, effective from March 1, 2023, the maximum authorized draft was set at 15.09 meters, or 49 and a half feet. Ships arriving with drafts over this limit may be allowed to transit depending on the actual level of Gatton Lake at the time of transit. Otherwise, they're required to trim or offload cargo to be allowed to transit. This helps in conserving water as less water is required to raise ships with fewer drafts. This move prevents excessive water usage by ships, requiring them to trim or offload cargo if their drafts exceed specified limits. There's also the lock optimization option, like cross-filling lockages. It is saved an amount of water equivalent to six lockages daily at the Panamax locks. Looking ahead, Potential solutions could involve water recycling systems within the locks, infrastructure enhancements for more efficient water usage, exploring alternative routes or methods to require less water, and building climate-resilient infrastructure to mitigate the impacts of future droughts. However, implementing these solutions demands meticulous planning and evaluation. Any alterations to the canal systems must be carefully executed to prevent disruptions to its crucial services. 
The Panama Canal stands as a complex feat of engineering, and any changes should aim to enhance its sustainability without compromising its vital role in global trade. Despite the current challenges posed by the drought, it's crucial to recognize that this turbulent period is temporary. Panama, a country resilient in the face of adversity, is already strategizing ways to tackle and overcome this recurring issue. Bye for now.